Welcome everybody to the uh, CDTA Board of Directors meeting on December 20th. Uh, we have a quorum. We'll start with the approval of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes that we provided to you from the meetings on October 25th and the special meeting on November 16th. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Denise. Anybody, any changes, additions, subtractions? Look good to me after a thorough review. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the next item are the recognitions. We have two. Where do we start with these council? Uh, we are going to start with Simeon today, Simeon Kuhn, who is celebrating 20 years of service. He's one of our Schenectady supervisors. All right, so Simeon comes to us on the recommendation of a fellow employee who says, I know you love to drive, so come drive for CDTA. This is the part that gets me. It's easy. Easy job. <laughs> <laughs> so Simeon applied, and as you know, they say the rest is history. Like others who started 20 years ago, Simeon started part-time in STAR for about a year before moving over to our fixed route system, and he was there for uh, several years before he became a supervisor. So each day when Simeon got off the road, he made a point to visit with the supervisors and supervisor Randy Fitch, who many of you probably remember was our Troy, ultimately our Troy superintendent um, for a while, our Troy division superintendent became his mentor. And Randy asked him to consider a supervisory position because he thought he'd be a great fit. So he applied and then he was promoted. Simeon says he loves being outdoors, meeting and greeting people, and loves providing solutions for folks and making their day better. And he said that this position has afforded him that opportunity. Over the years, though, he said there has been some changes. He says that the uniforms are the most obvious, that back in the day it was not as crisp and clean and consistent as it is today. And he says he really appreciates that. One of Simeon's favorite memories was a visit to Allegheny County Transit with our safety, transportation, and operations folks. He says it was helpful to see another system's operation and be able to bring back some ideas and suggestions for our own. In his spare time, Simeon still is moving and grooving and enjoys, to, enjoys being creative, and he sings and makes music with his DJ equipment on the side. He says he's always available to help family with projects, and he likes to visit his family in Long Island whenever he can. Uh, retirement plans are not in the near future for Simeon, um, and he says not because he can't, but because he doesn't want to. He says he wants to uh, work, work, work. It feels great for himself, and he says it keeps him healthy, young, and alive. <laughs> so, Simeon, congratulations on 20 years. Thank you. Um, all right, next up, celebrating 20 years of service is our facilities manager, John Rich. <laughs> so John made his way to CDTA after answering an ad in the paper for a facilities manager role at the Saratoga train station in 2003. In a way, John says that this is his second or third career. He's had a long history of working in the horse racing industry, either as an assistant trainer, breeder, and owner with the Rich Family Training and Breeding Farm for over 15 years, and then with Naira for 22 years in several roles, including assistant starter with the starting gate team. John says he loves to find efficiencies in his work and help people or his facilities function at our facilities function at their best. Quality of service and safety for his fellow coworkers is his top priority. Over the last two decades, John has experienced much of the growth that we've seen here at CDTA. He noted the expansion of CDTA into new counties, also new services like Cycle and Drive, and the size of our workforce, he says, has grown significantly over the years that he's been here. The train stations have been his focus, but having bus service and now flex to the stations has been a positive change to continue connecting the train stations to the communities that they serve. John says he loves his job and he takes great pride in creating a safe and welcoming environment for our region's commuters, while at the same time the benefits, he likes the benefits and enjoying some time off here and there. In his spare time, he loves biking, tennis, and recently started playing pickleball. Mm -hmm. he, also, he also loves to dance, ballroom, Latin, swing, he says really you name it, he loves to do it, all of it, and also spending time with his three kids and his five grand. Absolutely. So John says that retirement is somewhat Sooner greater. Later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, no, the notes say a little bit away. Right? Right but today's the day. 
be six in a while. while. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if it's not, if his retirement isn't oh, today, yeah. he says he's got a yeah. little more than a year to go. But, John, thank you. We've been so lucky to have thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So both of these, both of these guys are... Somewhat behind the scenes, but the behind the scenes people keep the place running. You know, JR basically is the face of the train stations, does all the day to day stuff, and, and Simeon is, you know, integral to what, what happens uh, in Schenectady. But I was talking to Simeon just before the meeting started, and uh, you know, just doing the usual, I guess, old guy exchange about, you know, what's right, what's wrong in the world. And he reminded me of something that I think we should be very proud of. During the, the three years or so of the pandemic, uh, not one person lost their job. Everybody got paid, whether they worked 40 hours, 20 hours, or 10 hours. Everybody got a full paycheck. No benefits were changed or compromised. And, and he reminded me of that. He said, you know, that's why uh, CDTA is what it is. So you know, thanks to everyone you know, around the room who made that happen. Because there were days I kind of wondered, how are we going to piece this thing together? But at the end of the day, you know, we I think we took care of everyone, and that you know that that should make us all proud. So, Timmy, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Carr. Uh, we'll move on to committee reports, and I'll kick it off with the board operations committee that convened on <clears throat> Wednesday, December sixth. We reviewed the agendas and activities for the uh, month of December. Our committee meetings and, of course, uh, today's today's agenda, and we reviewed the uh, committee schedule for 2024, which will be distributed. So, uh, board members and senior staff gathered on November 16th for our annual uh, retreat. We talked about CDTA's uh, successes, ways to achieve greater success, and while I didn't attend, I understand the proceedings were very informative. And among the highlights, uh, members were briefed on recent customer survey results, how CDTA monitors and tracks uh, customer experience through Transdash, and how we compare with other transit organizations. Uh, Mark Constiglione, the executive director of the Capital District Regional Planning Commission, led a discussion on the changing demographics of the region and what those changes might mean for CDTA. Mm -hmm. uh, the retreat concluded with the board looking forward to the future and identifying the attributes needed to drive uh, the company's success in the next few years. It was a great job, I understand, by Mark Ash and James Rubin, who led and guided uh, the discussion, uh, and their work uh, uh, resulted in an excellent retreat. Any, anybody have anything to add to uh, the session that day? I would just uh, reiterate what you just said. I thought it was uh, well orchestrated, well designed. Um, in addition to the strategic planning, I thought it gave the board and staff opportunity to discuss some of, some important items before just throwing something on the board. That was great. That was great. We did that too, though. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did that too. Yeah. So it was great. All right. And then uh, our uh, uh, board ops meeting a few weeks ago uh, included uh, talking with uh, Mike Collins and Trish Cooper about the budget update. A budget adjustments on our agenda today. It was recommended by the Strategic Planning Committee. Uh, Carmel also provided us with an update on our DBI work with tangible development to make CDTA more diverse, inclusive, and welcoming. Uh, this is a continual process and tangible is helping to inform us and, uh, and guide that work. Uh, the <clears throat> next uh, 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 meeting of the Board Operations Committee is slated for Wednesday, January 17th, 9.15 a.m. here at 110 Waterbelly Avenue. Any questions about that meeting? If not, we'll move on to Performance Monitoring Audit Committee. Dan Lynch. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the committee met at noon on December 13th of this year here at 110 Waterbelly Avenue. There were three consent agenda items that we discussed. The first is the approval of a contract for janitorial services. There's a bid issued, uh, or invitation for bid issued for janitorial services at 85 and 110 Waterbleed Avenue. Five bids were received. Staff recommends the low bidder complete building solutions. They already provide janitorial services at our rail stations. They're satisfied with their work. 
He needs a motion uh, to award a three-year contract to complete building solutions of Gilderland for a total of $197,640. Second a motion on the resolution. Thank you, Denise. Second. Second to Mike. Any uh, questions, comments about this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. All right. The second uh, consent agenda item is the approval of a contract for auto physical damage. Auto physical damage insurance provides protection for vehicles in the event of fire, theft, and collisions. It is rated on the dollar value of the fleet. Because of a challenging market, we did not have a firm price for this insurance by October's board meeting. As such, the board pre-approved a $550,000 amount based on premium indications from our broker. Final pricing came in at $462,000. It consisted of two firms providing $60 million in insurance protection for the fleet. We need a motion to award a one-year contract to Lexington Insurance of Boston, Massachusetts for the first $25 million layer and a contract to Star Surplus Lines of New York City for the next $35 million layer for a total premium of $462,295. This was effective on November 10th of 2023. Your motion on this? Peter, second. Thank you, Dave. This was talked about at the last uh, board meeting in October. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Appreciate the flexibility. We <clears throat> really had trouble with the market this, this year and getting quotes. Um, some of you may recall we adjusted all the schedules here uh, so that this wouldn't happen. But yeah, appreciate the flexibility. Cost of doing business, of course. Unfortunately, and going up, um, well over a million dollars now to ensure fleet buildings and resources. Any questions, comments about this? What's discussed previously? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, it's approved. The last uh, consent agenda item is the approval of safety management system plan. The FTA requires transit agencies to adopt an annual board approved safety management system, the SMS plan. The safety plan helps to identify and address safety concerns and challenges. Staff provided an update on safety activities and changes that have been taken pla- uh, have taken place this year, along with the future safety initiatives. The plan is included in the uh, packets provided. Uh, we need a motion to approve the safety management system plan as required by the Federal Transit Administration. <clears throat> motion for Peter, second by Denise. Good uh, committee presentation on this. Department of the FTA. Any <clears throat> questions, comments? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That uh, resolution is approved. All right, next is the investment committee, and I have the honor of stepping in for Chairwoman Figueroa to update everyone on the investment committee, which met on December 19th of this year, and we'll provide the quarterly report shortly. Perfect. Good job. <laughs> nice, That's a concise job. report. Well, <laughs> How much investment still? <laughs> we'll wait and see. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, we also have some uh, administrative discussion items that we discussed. The first is the monthly management report. Mike Collins gave the monthly management report for September. The MRT was 12% under budget for the month and 11% for the year. Customer revenue exceeded budget by 1.6% this month and is 4.5% over budget for the year. Advertising revenue is $250,000 over budget this month because of an overage payment from our Lamar Transit advertising. This happens once a year around this time. Wages are 7.3% under budget, but that will change because of the new labor contract. Workers' compensation is 23% under budget for the year. We are in good financial position. The last report is the monthly non-financial performance report. Chris Desney gave the non-financial report for September. (coughs) Fixed route ridership is up 20% this month and 19% for the year. Star ridership is up 9% for the month and 9% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance was at 71% and star on-time performance was at 74%. We miss one half of a percent of all of our scheduled trips. Preventable accidents were at 22 and non-preventable accidents were at 17. 
The next meeting of the committee is scheduled for January 24th of next year at 110 Waterbleed Avenue or on Microsoft Teams. And with that, this is my uh, last responsibility on this committee as chairman. Um, I'll not be here on January 24th. So hopefully I'll find you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, back to you. Thank you, Dan. Anybody have any uh, questions for Dan before he departs? <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on to uh, Community Stakeholder Relations <laughs> Committee. Dan Sacra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on December 14th at 11.15, both in person and via Microsoft Teams. John Scherzer reviewed branding and outreach efforts in Warren County as we continue our merger with Greater Glens Falls Transit. John also outlined the work that has been done to introduce the community to CBTA. This includes new bus stop signs, branding buses to CBTA colors, and meeting with key stakeholders in the region and, and also in the community. Uh, John also gave an overview of a new service that we'll, we will introduce in early 2024. Flex Plus will provide transportation options from the Joseph L. Bruno Rail Station to major points in downtown Albany for travelers coming into the rail station. The service will fill a transportation gap from the rail station and give customers an easy option. The service will operate on weekdays with a schedule to accommodate morning and afternoon peak travel times. We expect to roll out the service in mid-January 2024. Jamie Caslow provided the, the earned media and community engagement report. Over the last two months, CDTA earned 40 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio. Stories focused on the BRT Purple Line, our universal access agreement with St. Peter's, and our work to merge the Greater Glens Falls Transit System into CDTA. CDTA provided transportation to Schenectady County early voting sites. And we provided, we were involved with the Troy Victorian Stroll, the Schenectady Holiday Parade, and Women of Color Awards. Jamie outlined social media engagement for the last month. We saw an uptick in followers across all social media channels. Top posts included the Purple Line launch and the Pink Bus Poll. Looking ahead, we will welcome students from Columbia High School to the <coughs> Joseph L. Bruno Rail Station to perform holiday music for customers. We will participate in a morning of kindness on December 24th, and we will be part of NIPTA's Transit Awareness Day in February. Next meeting of the committee will be held on Thursday, January 25th at 11.15 a.m. via Microsoft Teams and 110 Waterbleed Ave in Albany. And that concludes the report. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Any questions on that uh, committee report? Seeing none, we'll move on to Mike Rochelle with Strategic and Operational Planning Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, the committee met uh, December 14th here at 110 Waterbury Ave and via Microsoft Teams. We have two consent agenda items for the board today. The first is the uh, uh, approve a fiscal year 2024 budget adjustment. <laughs> Our fiscal year operating budget is $126 million, and it was approved in March. An adjustment is required because STOA was increased by 7%, $3.8 million over our estimate. We propose making the following budget changes. Uh, reduce the mortgage recording tax by $900,000 to reflect current market conditions and actual budget performance. Increase the STOA line by $3.8 million to $59 million. Increase wages by $1.8 million to recognize the new contractual labor rates. And increase purchase transportation $1.2 million to $12 million. This increase is primarily due to star ridership increases and outsourcing more work. The budget changes were summarized on the provided documents, so we need a motion to approve a $2.9 million budget adjustment to increase the fiscal year 2024 operating budget to $128,979,121. Can I get a motion on the budget adjustment? So moved. Thank you, Georgie. Second. Peter, thank you. Any questions? 
on this since we talked about a couple different times on a couple different occasions. Yeah, and, and we, we, I think we all know that we knew in April that we were probably going to make an adjustment when, when Stowa came in um, much higher than we had thought, anticipated, and we anticipated also um, increasing wages as a result of the collective bargaining agreement. So it lines up, and we also did some housekeeping in there. I mean, our mortgage tax has not been um, what we had budgeted. I think it's what we thought, not necessarily what we budgeted. So we made that adjustment. Purchase transportation is essentially the, the sort of the wiggly line right now. We have to get that under control. We can't just keep putting a number in there and, and blowing past it. So a um, lot of staff work on that now, between now and you know, the end of March, to make sure we have that number firmed in. More importantly, you know, the work behind them. I have to say, it sort of blows me away. Mike and I have been on the board about five or six years. I think it was 70, 75 million when we came on the board. Dave and Denise, I mean, what was it? A buck and a half? Or? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just amazing how much the growth in the budget, uh, particularly on the, mm -hmm. on the revenue side with the help of state and federal assistance, but also on the, on the, on the income from uh, passengers. So. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah, and the yeah. expansion of expansion. services and yeah. you know, new mobility options. So, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. A lot of balls in the air. Yeah. As long as the finance people don't drop them. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's got to keep dropping. <laughs> Trish is the juggler, I think. <clears throat> any, uh, any questions or other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the budget uh, amendment say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is approved. Okay, so uh, next up is uh, approved fiscal year 2025 preliminary budget. We are required by New York State to approve a preliminary operating budget by December 31st. We use this as a starting point and we will have several more meetings as we work toward the final budget. The preliminary operating budget and five-year capital plan for fiscal year uh, 2025 was provided. The preliminary operating budget is projected to be $134.5 million, a $5.6 million increase over the current fiscal year. More than half the increase, $2.9 million, is for wages. Our wage line includes budgeting a full year of service for the DRT Purple Line, adding Glens Falls Transit, and a contractual wage increase of 3.25% in June. We estimated 5% increase for health insurance, 3% increase to purchase transportation, and 34 increase in fuel cost. We are not changing mortgage recording tax projections because of high interest rates. We are estimating customer revenue to increase 5% next year. Based on a projected state budget deficit, it is unclear at this time how the deficit will affect our STOA funding. We will project a 7% increase includes Glens Falls to show a balanced budget, although this increase is highly dependent on New York State budget priorities. The five-year capital plan was also reviewed, and we focused on the first year. The plan consists of recurring projects such as the annual fleet replacement program, technology enhancements, and our shelter program. It also includes the start of a multi-year plan to address the condition of our facilities, including the addition of the Glens Falls facility. Longer-term plans include testing and piloting zero-emission vehicles, and we continue to develop plans to electrify parts of our facility so to support electric vehicles. We need a motion to approve the fiscal year 2025 preliminary operating budget of $134,575,247 and a five-year capital plan of $288,685,441 to meet our New York State statutory requirement. Option on this? So moved. Second, Second by Dan. Thank you. Any questions? As, as Mike said, this is a regulatory uh, requirement. Yeah, quick, requirement. quick uh, this is both, uh, it's definitely ignorant and it might be naive as well, but how are, how is the stow, the stow allocation determined? Is it, is it a, 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 
a gap fill once the budget is? Is it are there formulaic aspects to it? I'm sorry, I, I don't. I just don't. Know. Yeah, I'd love to tell you it's formulaic. Um, basically, where they start is what you got last year. <clears throat> I'm sure. I'm sure, I could find this if I go way back. There's a formula that you know was used to compute state operating assistance, but that formula is kind of what you got last year and what we have available. Uh, now, there are funding pipelines behind this, all kinds of funding pipelines that, you know, Division of Budget, you know, uses as their you know, arguments for or against, um, but it's not real scientific. And, and the reason I was asking, because I wanted to just get a sense of how direct the connection was between a, a budget deficit and STOA funding versus a surplus and STOA funding. Is there any... You mean state budget deficit? State budget, yeah. Is there yeah, any there's a connection, connection right? That? The number this morning was $4.3 billion. That's the projected deficit today. You know, real work, in real terms, $4.3 billion on the state budget, that's not a lot of money. But it's actually better than what it was. It, gets better, it seems to be getting better, right? But I looked at what the priorities are, and I looked hard, and I couldn't find anything that even started with a T. Uh, <laughs> never mind, James. Um, so... Yeah, it's gonna be a tough year, I think, for us. The nip, the the nip, the number, the target is fifteen percent. We're not moving off fifteen percent. I don't think that's the number that Lisa and I will use. Lisa Morello and I will use. I think what we're gonna do is look at the fact that you know we've now assumed Lutz Falls uh, will come from our county, which will require additional um, investments on our part. Um, so we'll, we'll lean on that. And that's what we tend to do. We tend to lean on. Here's what we're doing. Here's here's the positive, um, and, we, and we let the industry say, "Oh gosh, we need more money." Hey, Carm, I got a question on that. The, the newly acquired or the mergers with you know, Glens Falls and Warren and Montgomery counties. How has the state delegation been in receiving that from us support advocacy state? Outstanding. I mean, you know, we were able to we were able to, to convince them. Amsterdam was worth an additional four million dollars in operating assistance. And again, back to that was non formula, that was our number. And they, they accepted that. And in fact, Warren County representatives and the assembly member um, already in tune with that. What we what what do we need? I've given her given her division budget number, but yeah. Outstanding. Awesome. I just want to mention too, it, it, it's good to see in the capital plan the investments back to those communities that we've been talking about. It's really great to see doing yeah, the well, right thing. Yeah, we promise that stuff. Yeah. 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 It's more than just running the operation to show up. Now, you know, can we, I mean, if, you know, I'll jump ahead a little bit. We, we were in Glens Falls for a, uh, I guess we call it a community meeting. Um, come to find out, they don't usually have community meetings. The transit system uh, and the the, the Prandtl Library the public meeting room was packed. Oh, with people, awesome. there's no there's no shortage of list of things that they want. So yeah, the question will be there. You know, what, what, what do we? But yeah, outstanding band. And a lot of that I think is the work that we do behind. The, you know, we are constantly meeting with our elected officials to make sure that the one thing we don't want to do is surprise them. Especially if we need more money. Good comments. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all those in favor of Resolution 47 on the preliminary budget, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Okay. Okay. And uh, so the last item was our administrative discussion item, the five-year operational and capital maintenance plan. Jeremy Smith provided an update on our five-year uh, operational and capital maintenance plan. This plan provides for a proactive approach of state of good repair, fully informing us ahead of required investments in promoting a safe, functional, and com comfortable work environment for employees and stakeholders. The work for the plan began with facility condition assessment re report, which was reviewed with the board earlier in the year. That report cataloged and examined every major facility system for which CDTA is responsible. 
each system's condition was ranked, the recommended action uh, provided and level of urgency identified. That report, among others, served as the basis for developing a five-year plan to address deficiencies in priority order as funding allows. Year one focuses on high urgency items, health and safety related items, and any other items that require immediate action. Criticality of items decreases as we move out of year five. The next meeting of the committee will be January 25th here at 110 Waterville UDF and via Microsoft Teams, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mike. Any other questions about that before? To follow up to Georgie's point, um, that work that Jeremy Alcorn <clears throat> seeds the capital plan, and, and in a lot of ways also seeds the operating plan. What you know, complement of you know, growth in the workforce, for example, do we need to support um, you know, expansion, a new building, uh, you know, whatever we might be talked on the So these things kind of work hand in hand. They're not, they're not independent. Uh, next item on the agenda is the CEO report. Is this a holiday report? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna, I, I always try to throw a spin on it. Uh, the spin is, um, I don't know why um, the other day I was looking at my bookshelf in the office and I picked up uh, Dave Stackrow and Doug Eadie's book on uh, governing, basically, and just started flipping through the pages and kind of reminded me of what just happened. This board functions a little differently than most boards. You know, all, the, all the reports are made by the committee chair. Um, no action is taken in committee. It's all taken. You know, the board is, is the master in, in, in operation. Um, so it, 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 it makes me feel pretty good that you know, a model that <clears throat> is 20 plus 20 years old, you know, we've tweaked it along the way um, <clears throat> to, to fit, make sure it fits for us. It still works. Um, Doug is Doug. It still sends. I, get, I must get an email from not generally email from him three times a week, and, and it's yeah, it's, it's it's amazing to me that it's still works. So that's my little spin. But um, the report is full of activities. I mean, this this place just hums along at, at a really high level all the time. Uh, I've been here a long time. It used to be the summer kind of. Slow down. That doesn't happen anymore. Holidays, you know, you'd start slowing down early December and you'd pick it back up second week of January. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen anymore. So it's just full of stuff. And because the committee's function so well and you made all the reports and a lot of the stuff that I have in my report, I'm scratching off. You know, we already talked about it, but we didn't talk about uh, the Gateway Mobility Hub. You know, we want to talk about full innovation. It was on display. We, we were uh, right at the base of State Street. Um, and, you know, if you think about where this idea came from, it really started with a report Chris Desney made to the board. Uh, eight, nine, seven. Before the pandemic, he was on an app the trip, and one of the you know, bringbacks was mobility hubs. You know, in Europe and in other Scandinavian countries, just, they fit these things in like on a city block. We really ought to be looking at that. And there's a way to do it. And we we identified the gateway hub at the base of State Street. And if you're familiar with what's going on down there, it's unbelievable. You have new residential, new commercial. You've got Proctors right up the street. Schenectady Community College is across the street. Their dorms are right next door. And there's this kind of park that, I don't know, was sort of three quarters done. And, um, I know he doesn't want the credit, but Jamie LaHutt and Ray Gillen really deserve the credit because we talked about this. It really evolved out of the fact that the Greyhound station was just an eyesore. An eyesore. And um, basically, they they wanted us to take it over, rehabilitate it, and run it. And it's like, no, we don't want to do that. It was an eyesore. It's, it's, nobody uses it anyway. Uh, and that was sort of the conclusion. One day, Ray and Jamie um, said, hey, we'll, we'll, do, we'll buy it. We'll knock it down. We'll, well, there's no remediation. Right? We'll remediate it, and you guys build the mobility hub right there. And literally, in a matter of six months, that was done. And basically, point the finger at us. Pressure's on us. Get it done. 
And we did. You know, we did. Probably took a little longer than we thought. A little longer. I don't know. The damn railing didn't come in on time, right, Jeremy? Uh, a couple things, but in addition to the hub, which is really great, if you if you get a chance to get by there, take a look at it because everything is there. Our buses, our cars, our bikes. Great waiting area. You know, the, the now you know required heated sidewalk and things of that nature. Um, and it just it blends into the development. People come and go uh, through there. It, it, it's exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, so you have lots of you know people there. Uh, <clears throat> Jamie and Emily guaranteed media. The media covered it. I, I thought quite well. Um, but I, it's just another check mark on the things that you know we want to get done and we want to try. We have smaller hubs in the planning stages in Troy. In fact, I was walking out of Paul Vandenberg's uh, annual Christmas party the other day, and uh, the mayor-elect was walking in, and Carmela, the other Carm, we refer to each other, said to me, we got to talk. we got to get that uh, mobility hub in Little Italy done. And I was like flabbergasted that it's, yeah, it's on a radar. Uh, so we have one planned in, in Troy. We have a couple of... Um, locations in, in Albany, and they'll all probably get done, or at least be started in, in, in 2024. So while I was thinking about the mobility hub, I was thinking about the BRT, you know, the red line, and I was able to extract some interesting facts. It's been in operation since April of 2011, when we started this whole BRT thing, which has been really a, a, an unbelievable uh, win for CDTA and our customers. But in its 12 years of operation, 30 million boardings on the uh, 30 million, uh, you know, now 40 mile network of BRT service that probably will generate, and this is off the top of my head, you know, eight or nine million boardings, probably more uh, over the course of a year. I mean, it's, it's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Again, hats off to the board. I was talking, to, um, I ended up talking, I think Jamie arranged this. A researcher from the Urban Institute in Washington, we were talking about you know, these, these BRTs, and they're just, they're just phenom if done right, they're just phenomenal generators of ridership. And it's worked for us, and I think it's really changed the image of CDTA and who we are and what we do, and allow has allowed us to get a lot of stock, so to speak, and, and to get things done maybe that we normally wouldn't. wouldn't. So while I was thinking about that. Looking at ridership, and uh, right now through November, there's 10 million boardings, a little more than 10 million boardings on the system. So if you project that over a full year, we'll finish the fiscal year close to 16 million boardings. That blows past the pandemic, obviously, and will be one of our highest ridership counts in the last 15 years. So we're back. Um, it's different. It's not in the same places, but you know we're back. And really, we're just in, the only thing holding us back is the ability to expand faster. Right now, we just don't have the ability to expand much faster. We don't have the resources, and I think, I think you know what I mean, the resources. Um, Lens Falls, basically done. The employees are our employees on January 1, um, and we'll start building uh, from there. Lots of, I was talking to Chris this morning, there's lots of uh, FTA stuff still left to be done, but. Uh, We'll get it. There's nothing that um, is looking like a roadblock, so we'll, we'll get it all done. But on January 1, they become ours. Uh, didn't get as many as we thought at the end of the day, but pretty much the, the core group is, is coming over. Um, thanks to our labor, um, our, our collective bargaining agreement, they're all, they're all in line for big raises, so um, they're, they're going to be happy, I, I think. Uh, so that's all good. <laughs> Collective bargaining agreement, all the mechanisms, you know, um, I don't know, us negotiators, we get to just sign our names on the uh, CDA and we walk away from it. Then the real work starts. The payroll team, the finance team uh, literally have to work, I mean, overtime to put all this together. You know, new wage rates. Uh, the uh, retroactive payments, the uh, pension changes, contributions, all that kind of stuff um, requires a lot of time and effort. So thanks to Trish and all her gang back there. Everybody, I think, 
got what they were supposed to get. And if they didn't, well, see the roll. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But I think everybody got what they needed to get. Uh, we wrote the checks yesterday. Went today. Went today. The, the lump sum uh, payment to the pension plan uh, was made. Um, so now they'll begin um, that, that calculation as to when, when the increased uh, benefit uh, hits, how that hits, but uh, all that is done. Um, it was also nice, um, uh, we reported that you were going to hear music, but it was actually last week <coughs> and this week. It's nice to go over to the, the station and hear the Columbia High School Orchestra Band and Orchestra playing uh, Christmas music. We used to do that back back in the day. Um, and we've uh, re redone that now that we have the Joseph L. Bruno. That, that, that has a nice sound to it, too. Um, but in retrospect, over 2023 has been a great year for us. Um, we kicked it off by launching the electric car share program. Um, we expanded uh, the bike share program. We opened the mobility hub. And last but not least, you know, we got the purple line up and running uh, and completed 40 miles. Uh, nowhere to go but up. We're already thinking about what we're going to do in 2024. I guarantee you it will be bigger and better. Uh, film at 11 as to what that all means. Uh, we don't stop. So hope that everyone has a great holiday season. Uh, get to spend some time doing whatever makes you happy. Uh, sounds like a lot of you have your family coming to you. Uh, if you're traveling, uh, be safe. But uh, on behalf of everybody, happy holidays. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Yeah. That has been a great year. It has been a really good year. For all your help and support. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, board member comments. I'd be remiss not to remind everyone of Dan Lynch's uh, election to a judicial spot and are stepping off the board at the end of the year. We really appreciate all your time and effort. You'll be missed here. We've added a, a lot of uh, dimensions, and your experience has been great. We'll definitely be uh, you missed at CDTA. You're always welcome back, though, and you. we can catch us, uh, catch us on streaming on yeah. YouTube. Or something. So it was a sad day the other day. Dan uh, shared with me his um, letter to the governor, and he resigned. And it just all I could text back was sad. Um, and I'm happy for you, uh, but it's a great loss, I think, for CDTA. The court's gain is uh, CDTA's loss, but we have the obligatory resolution. This is one of the few things that I will take credit for. Um, I do these. I, I get, I, you know, I, I have a lot of fun with them. Some places lawyers do these. I just can't see a lawyer doing this. Um, I'm a little so, scared right now. Yeah. Yeah. Bear, bear with us. Bear with us. Some, some of this is true. Uh, some of this is true. But here we go. Uh, whereas Daniel C. Lynch has represented Albany County with distinction as a board member of the Capitol District Transportation Authority since June of 2022. And whereas Mr. Lynch served the CDTA board with a background in government, the law, organizational operations, and employee relations. And whereas Mr. Lynch's career in public service and practical experience with matters related to the operation of a public sector operation were invaluable to CDTA. And whereas Mr. Lynch's experience as a community leader brought balance to the decision-making process at CDTA. And whereas Mr. Lynch is deeply committed to the people of Albany County, he brought a local view of the impact that CDTA has on Albany County and the people it serves. And whereas Mr. Lynch comes from a family of attorneys and judges who are committed to the advancement of public sector service. And whereas Mr. Lynch chaired the Performance Monitoring and Audit Committee with enthusiasm, professionalism, and with an interest in the work of CDTA. And whereas Mr. Lynch is a passionate and dedicated advocate for the men and women who work at CDTA, he cares about them and the critical role they play in the development of our success at CDTA. And whereas Mr. Lynch was an active participant at CDTA functions, representing the board at community employee events with his charismatic smile and warm greeting. And whereas Mr. Lynch provided wise and invaluable counsel to board members and staff members alike. And whereas Mr. Lynch was recently elected to the state Supreme Court in the third judicial district. And whereas the court's gain will be a loss for CDTA, Mr. Lynch's tenure will soon end. 
Uh, therefore, it be a resolve that the board members and employees of the Capital District Transportation Authority wish Godspeed and best wishes to Daniel C. Lynch as he completes this assignment, continues his extraordinary record of public service as a Supreme Court Justice, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution, in addition to being spread upon the minutes of the authority, be framed and presented to Dan Lynch. as an attorney. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good and touching. And, uh, you know, I had to draft the, the, uh, the letter to the governor informing her in, in the office of, of my impending resignation. Um, and Carmen is absolutely right. It took a, a matter of one minute before he fired back. This is sad. And I, I agree with him. There's, this is, uh, it's bittersweet. Um, I myself, over the last week or so, have had some time to reflect uh, in a very, how do I say, lonely office that I currently <laughs> sit in with no pictures and no anything. It's empty. Um, but in that reflection, I, 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 I've done some reminiscing as well. Uh, it's funny that you say that in, in your um, CEO uh, report. Uh, this board... You know, I've had the, the opportunity, as it was noted, for the last year and a half, uh, has really opened my eyes to so many amazing things, not just with the people that sit at this table, but the folks that, all, you know, line the, the exterior of the room and the, all those that are out in, in the facilities doing the work and the operators. Um, having lived in, in, in born and raised in the city of Albany, CDTA was always there. Never knew what it actually <coughs> did. And it took this to, to open my eyes. So my, my roles within, within uh, my professional life have, you know, it's easy to toss a, a, around the word partner. Everyone wants to be a partner. Um, I think what CDTA has done now in my perspective, from my perspective is, is proven the validity of that word. Um, CDTA is a trusted partner. Uh, not just to Albany County, but the entire region. Uh, the amount of things that get tossed as opportunities for us to assist, I don't think that we've turned one down. And that's just an incredible thing to really think about. Uh, and become not just trusted, but reliable. And uh, it is bittersweet that I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. And, and what I'm moving on to is something that I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to uh, hopefully make some impact from, from that position. But it has really been an honor to, to sit on this board. I tried very hard to, to learn as quickly as I could how this thing turns and how it operates. And I appreciate CARM taking uh, many opportunities last summer, summer of 2022, to walk me around the facility, to sit down and have coffee and introduce me to, to what it is it means to be part of the CDTA family. So. It has uh, really been a, a wonderful experience to, to have had. Uh, the level of appreciation and respect for the board, the CEO, the senior staff, and all the employees has just grown tremendously. So I appreciate that, that wonderful uh, uh, resolution. Uh, if I do get a frame copy or a copy of it, it will most definitely uh, be presented proudly in, the, in my new office. So thank you, everyone. It's been great. Thank you. <laughs> Just like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Don't mess around here. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. No idle chatter about that. At all. <laughs> there's, a, there's a formula here. <laughs> well, thank you, Dan. We're definitely going to miss you. Good luck in your uh, future endeavors. Anyone else have any uh, comments under, under board comments? Anything to say before we depart here? Uh, a comment first to say uh, I love the ties and the red that's going on at this table. <laughs> it's awesome. And have a happy holiday, everyone. I wanted to see 
Um, and I don't want to end on this note, so someone come up with so something really positive. <laughs> I wanted to see what our response was to, to the article in the newspaper that hit me. We, we did such a good job getting, and I'm like, where did this come from? Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm not going to comment on the perspective that was given there, but I just wanted to know, are we have a reaction to that, or is the best not to react? Or well, no, well, let's be straight. I mean, it, we're not perfect. To this stuff happens. I mean, we report on it regularly. We talk about trip cuts. We talk about service gaps. Um, uh, but occasionally, you know, we don't get it right. Um, that's a case where it's kind of a combination of those things. Um, it, you know, I had thought of sending you guys a note. That's why I'm going to see it tomorrow. Um, and it got overblown. You know, you know Jamie takes this personally. I don't, I don't know why it was on the front page, but yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was the on the front there, page. Yeah. If you read the whole article at the end, you know, yeah. it's getting better, and this is a great service. I don't know. It was at the end. You know, <laughs> Emily and Jamie, and don't we know, don't we know somebody at the time? Jamie, I'm not going to bother. You know, let it play out. But it's a learning tool for us. It's a learning tool. We're right now, I mean, Rich Cordero is knee deep in something that we, I think we've talked about this, we call it, we call it headway management. And we can headway management basically when times are tough or when things are congested, you literally literally let our automated system assist us. So you, the schedule goes out the window, and basically the system will say, "Okay, this bus leaves now. This bus leaves next. This bus," and basically it spaces things out so you don't have that twenty minute gap, yes. or fifteen minute gap. And you're telling people there's ten or twelve minute service. So we're already work. We have we have the solution, but we haven't field tested it enough so that we're ready to say that's what it is. <clears throat> it is what it is. Listen, remember we get oh, okay. we get three or four hundred complaints in this organization every month. Mo a lot of them are a heck of a lot more real or important than than those complaints. Um, it is what it is. I mean. I guess this fellow's new, and he, that's his job, right? Yeah, I mean, it, came, it actually came from a tweet. There was a gentleman back in October who tweeted um, about the, uh, the trip being cut. Um, trip was cut. He tagged the TU in it. And so Emily actually flagged it and said, you know, it's something that probably will get will come up in the next month or so. Um, hadn't heard from the gentleman until maybe just a couple of days ago tag the DU again, and so that's where the whole thing kind of uh, came up. Um, I mean, in full disclosure, the reporter um, kind of lost all of his notes for the story and called me again on Monday to do the interview again, and so some of what was in the article wasn't 100% uh -huh. accurate in, in what got said and in how everything was described, so I had another conversation with him yesterday about it because, as Carm said, yes, I, I take some of that personally since I'm the one who's in the article being quoted as saying those things, and there were a couple of lines in there that he just didn't capture accurately so we're, we're working through that i was assured he would be the, at the morning of kindness on sunday morning at the mohawk cuts and humane society so we could talk more about it there then so um but that's kind of where it, it came from but yeah obviously not so we'll, i thanked him for the front page we'll story turn this into a good thing on <laughs> yeah. sunday uh when jamie is doing her act of kindness she will do her act of kindness with it yeah, I did. It wasn't because yeah. I took yeah. it as oh, what a horror show, and I and absolutely far from reflection of view. It was more like, wow, this is like you know the article that says the biggest thing <coughs> happening in economic development was the Chick Fil A at the airport. You know, like yeah, we slow news day. Yeah, we we took it just it. seemed like a the, the slow news day type of thing. Yeah, right. Throw it in there, and I did not like the way. Only thing I did like was again the front. Being that and yeah. then yeah. having to read and go, oh, yeah, I knew it was happening, but when I walked, I didn't know the placement. So I'm, I mean, right, my neighbors yeah. laugh at this, you know, six o'clock in the morning, here I am walking down the drive, <laughs> pick it up, and when I get close to the house, I can see it's like, what the heck is that? Yeah, yeah. it is what it is. I, there's still some issues that we're working on, you know, on reliability and. You know, listen, our customers give us great grades, but let's not get lost in that. Um, little wake-up call. Yeah. Good. Every now and then, you got to get hit. Anything else for the board? 
No, next meeting is on uh, January 31st. Uh, back here. Yeah. 20, 10, 20, 20, 20, 24. What's that? 24. 20, 24, right? Right. Everyone have a great new year. Happy holidays to everyone. It's been a spectacular year. Look forward to it. Keeping at it in 2024. <laughs> Take a, a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Dan. Second, Peter. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good.